Hi, I'm Svante Schubert and I want to talk about ODF and its toolkit today. Um, I've uploaded the slides already, if you like to. Um, they're on GitHub in the ODF toolkit. And um, I start slowly, I try to say something about what is a standard. The standard is like a blueprint, a cooking recipe, so it's for reusage, for interoperability. I think the most famous standard for me is the Dean H4 uh, paper format, which is in Europe quite frequent. We have a letter in the USA, I believe. And so, um, so that the same size can be reused everywhere, yes, and I think standards have been um, coming from Second World War where they need the screws on the same size. And by adding reusability, you will prevent lock-in effects, so um, others are on the market, and of course you're able to lower in costs, especially when you have um, shared tests and um, validators. And um, what's yet not in a standard, I'm working as well as an, um, as an in invoice standard in Europe, um, and there it's, that this, it's easy that the invoice should no longer be a paper, it should be digital so you can uh, consume it, but the standard itself is being published as digital stone. So it's very hard for software developers to get the information that are in the standard. And I think one, ODF is one of the few where uh, things like this have been done, like we are extracting the default values, so I might show us, see you later. And, but there's still a long way to go. And so digitalization for me is that you're able to throw the data over the digital fence and the other side can automate access it. It's about automation, that no human is, in, um, in, is necessary. And especially, it's occurring for invoices, you can throw it anyway. But also the, the standard, if there's a standard, then people should extract most information. I, I'm telling you this because I'm, I worked on this ODF toolkit and uh, trying to, uh, writing an ODF application, and it's like painting my numbers. There's no, there's nothing you can add on um, art or something. You, you just have to fill the standard, and it's simply boring work, tedious work to do so. All right, so you might see, and that takes some time here for now, there are two standards. There's an ODF ISO and an OASIS standard. So what's the difference here? And I'm not so much sure about ISO, so I know the real regulation of SEN, which is a European standard, okay? So the European standard, SEN committee, which is the dark blue things, every country has one standard organization, like DEAN, I mentioned before, for Germany, which is, um, which is then being collected as, as a group, as SEN, or international as ISO, all right? So, um, I just mentioned that it's the members, but you see it on the slides later, and um, there's a nice but ter chaotic, <laughs> chaotic thing, and I, I just want to show you here, there is ISO, and there are levels here, okay? There are columns and rows. So we have, first of all, the national level, national bodies like DEAN for Germany, and we have Europe level, the group of all European national, I showed earlier, and then the international level, and then we have columns, where it's electrical uh, engineering, telecommunication, and all the rest. And because we are not electrical engineering, telecommunication, that's a file format, we are all the rest, and we are here in this column for an internal standard. So, and why is it so important? Because there's a regulation uh, that's a European law that's binding for every country that a standard that's being used by a country have to be a SEN standard or ISO standard might be uh, international even better, I believe. I'm not sure if it's better, but it's the Dupont Pardon. And that is the reason why, um, so it's the, I said, it's a queen, um, let's say the difference, the ISO standard is the queen of standards because it's so powerful, the governments have to use it. Um, it's so, um, so important for companies, big companies to get it. That is, that is the reason, that is the reason why Microsoft first standardized in ECMA and then um, standardized later in ISO. And let's, I've just forgotten one thing. So this site is out of the scope of standard. You see there's OASIS, and there's WC, ECMA, and so on. And that is the standard. And just to mention once, because I think it's a little bit suboptimal, um, I have to pay Dean to participate, to be participating SAM. And then later on, um, the standard is being, the work is being sold by ISO or SEN and or DEAN, yes. And so it's like you pay in that you work there and then it's being sold and it's no open standard. And the nice thing or the trick I would say that's possible is um, there's a, something called a fast path. You can do the standardization at Oasis and then throw it over the defense. It's not digital, <laughs> but, but then 
it's being released again as an ISO standard where only a tutorial change has happened. Okay? So, um, for instance, Great Britain demanded to use ODF, and, um, and it's, as I said, it's not free uh, um, governed. I'm not aware of the legal situation there, of if there's European law, so I have to ask back on that, I realized. And there's this fast path I explained, and um, there's no difference. You can choose if you want to keep the technical uh, edition on the, let's say, on the level below, like at Oasis, or like Microsoft did, they choose to drop the work at ECMA and continue work on the international level, which is, uh, I think, even more difficult to participate because um, you have to buy in uh, and it's more expensive to, to go there. So I think we, um, Oasis ODF did it the right way. There's a fast path, there's an open standard you can download, you can see, and uh, still it's an ISO standard by just throwing it over the fence. And, um, so what is the status, sorry? So the status is we have an OISA standard 103. It's published two years ago. ISA standard 103 is in the queue. There are some editorial problems. They want to, I think, they have to, I'm not sure why the criteria are there to, to change something. And uh, um, so let's say it's simply in the queue. I don't go into details. And we, at the TC level, are the feature-free phase of 104, OK? So um, talking about the, the standard, oh, sorry, the TC. So, here at, the, um, here at the LibreOffice conference, half of the voting members are present, yes? And the order is just the order by, by, the, um, by, the, by the members with the OASIS tab, because Regina here, I think she's the most active, and thank you, I must say, you are, um, you are the pulling, I won't say horse, <laughs> you're the pulling force, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> no, no, really, it's, it's, um, most of the pro bowls um, are coming from Regina, and I'm more, um, I'm more there because I want to digitalize the standard. I have a different view on that, um, on this area. And you will not see so much about the detail what an ODF is there, but I gave a few links there. And she comes from ODF. Michael Stahl is from Allotropia, that's been sponsored by Thorsten. Arthur Herstein from Microsoft. Um, he he um, gives feedback on how Microsoft does things. And unfortunately, Professor Anders Gulsov left. He was working for Caligra as a spreadsheet office. And Franz and Patrick are both working as an, um, an editorial, uh, working on the draft. They're being paid by, by, by the community. There's a collection, so now. All right. Yeah, of course. Why did he so long? Uh, he's too much to do. He's too much on his plate. and. Uh, it's, he had to focus on, 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 on his daily work. That's, there was no, there was peace, there was no, it's very constructive. Orginia, want to say anything about no, this? It, it still has more time. Okay. Yeah, so just no time, she, she said. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's wonderful harmonic. I heard about <laughs> that some other people have struggled in their boards, but we are very, very nice, very <laughs> civilized technical persons here. All right. So, what is if, Situation on the technical level, we have um, a feature freeze, and we have an issue tracker for where we have um, um, listed. There's a query. This is a link. I, uh, if you click on that, you can you can go into detail what's happening. And for editorial things like there's something broken, we have to write it down as well. But we don't put it in the Jira issue because otherwise we, we uh, it would be polluted with with a lot of issues. These are just the uh, I would say semantic the things that we, we want to change um, uh, for the applications. And these issues are later generated into the agenda with a link, so you can jump to it and see in the detail what we have changed, what was the discussion, okay? And the same happens here with the editorial GitHub. And the GitHub was uh, created, uh, we added it in 2001, we realized after 11 years we, we had to do, uh, I'm not sure, after one or two to one or three, after uh, about a decade, all the tooling to transform to HTML and, um, and uh, the extraction, the XLT, the extraction of default values, all this should have been on an, an one level. And so that's the reason we, we, we started that. All right. The, um, the other thing is the, what is the status of the ODF in LibreOffice? And thanks for Regina here. She, um, um, she provided here the, the list of, of these budget. These are mostly even ODF one or two problems that are not implemented in, in um, I wouldn't say mostly, but a few that are there, and, um, and the list 
what is missing for 1 and 4 is in the, in the next batches. And as well, but just because it's a little odd here, there's an, um, a process about the missing automation that we need, that the editors don't have to do so much manual work. Um, they are paid editors, right, by the community, and um, a lot of these things can be avoided just by automation. And one of these things is, this was the last TC call, that is a typical, um, it's an element here, and this is, I think maybe it was once generated, but we realized that there are some of these links that are, if you click on it, you jump to that um, um, element, uh, sorry, attribute here, and um, these are broken. Either the numbers and they're going to the wrong uh, element. So it's, of course, we should go there with the ODF toolkit and go there, is there any name, string name that's uh, similar to an element or attribute and has it the wrong style and is there behind a link which is correct and, okay, but this can be done. Yes, it's not rocket science, okay. Just to give you an example of what's the state. So what's ODF quickly? It's a zipped XML and there can be other things like, um, um, like, like images and also embedding other documents and um, it's, about the package, we have different parts, and um, the XML is the third, the biggest part, and there's all the formula, I just uh, dropped it there. And what I believed, uh, realized what was missing is like in W3C, there are a lot of primers, like you have a technical guidance just to, to read through um, an introduction from a high-level view, what is the, the format about? Because this is what the OD2 toolkit also misses, like someone, um, um, who is not aware should just get a prime of ODF and then he knows how the toolkit handles that, yes. So um, just realized when I, I opened that. And that is one of my favorite slides for, for uh, <laughs> not only the pizza, and my favorite uh, restaurant uh, for pizza outside of Brussels. But it is um, a general problem. I realized very late that there's a, something different between the syntax and the semantic, yes. And the syntax to me is just, um, when you go to an international restaurant or the group, yes, and we, we, we all want to eat something, we have different menus and they're all different languages, but they point to the same thing, to the same uh, bread or wine, uh, vino wine, wine, yeah. And um, we have different words, tokens and languages, but they, there's just one, so there should be just one semantic, you no know, alternate effects, so we don't start there, but okay. But there's, let's, um, let's say, so what I say, it's, it doesn't really so much if we save it as zipped XML or JSON or, um, or a binary format, as long I, I would prefer that in the future there will be transformation between these things for free at the standard level, but the, 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 the syntax is like a container, like a glass where you liquid it in, in, and if it's not sufficient, like if your text file, their formats got lost, yes. So, but um, Markdown would help there a little bit, but um, you got, pro and cons about this. So all I'm going to say is that we should separate more about the syntax and semantic. And the semantic for me is something that we reused in tests and specification and applications that we'll call features, yes. I, and, and this is something like we test three features, we have feature tests and these wordings should be in the, um, in the specification as well. Um, and this is not very clear. Why do we need it? We need to get rid of this complexity. There's always a saying, how did an elephant, spoon by spoon? And you have to, uh, one thing is if you have a large piece, you have to cut it down. And these things are featured, disjoint features, like um, there's an ODF application that might be able to, to handle with tables, and that is a feature. You has, you like buying a toaster, you got um, the features and you say, oh yes, and you can checkbox it and can test it. And so, um, and to be able to communicate across ODF applications, it's, it's very, it would be helpful that we put that on the f uh, feature uh, the, on, the, on the level there, yes. So, and there's more about it because um, we, 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 let me see, there are, yeah, there are also the sub-feature like, of course, the background color of the table doesn't exist without the table. And, um, and um, what I also want to say is that the user has a certain thing how he can change a feature, yes, like inserting a column, and we have absolutely no such thing. Like, uh, we only have XML and define what we are loading and saving. I always say, it's a shock frozen work of your, what you've just done. You dump it down and you get it back and you continue working. And, but something like, the user, yeah, because it's always the same thing, inserting a column, you put it in the right column, uh, sorry, inserting, yeah, in the column line, and then in every row, there's a cell being added, yes? And this change pattern, 
sh might and should be defined in the specification, right? Because then we can um, have tests more easily. There's, for instance, DOM HTML browser has JavaScript, and JavaScript only works across all the browsers because they have a DOM, it's the, a very simple syntax-based API, but they have an API which is on the standard level, so um, they have um, macros that work on all applications. And I love it that this asset test, if you just click on that, then it jumps up from 0 to 97 in Chrome and Firefox um, that tells you out of the box, when you by opening the document, what is the, um, what is the level of conformance? Yes, there. And I, I love it, yes. And we, we, we are unable to do that such test at a specification level because we do not have any, um, any changes. And you know, change tracking, think about it, it's more easily if you know what a change is. <laughs> yeah, it's very simple. So if we desire such interoperable tests and macros and a API, and not any API, but a high level semantic API, so how should we proceed? And Okay, so one thing is we have to find these features, okay? It's, there's something called, because there are sub-features, we think there might be a feature tree or something, okay? And we can, of course, reverse engineer because, of course, LibreOffice has all these features and um, it's what the user usually adds, like a table and moves away. These are the large junks of XML. So, and... Um, we can define these state changes and we can also look at the grammar that just um, because the XML is not all equal. Yes, they are um, some is just boilerplate, the office body is always there, there's no sense, no semantic there. And something like table table, it's the start of such a feature where you a junk of a puzzle piece that you end or delete. Okay? So um, and the other thing is we need to have maybe a dictionary there um, when we um, when we look earlier I'm I'm not sure if I'm going, now. I'm going to go back. When I, when I told you this slide about what the problem with the elements, they had some wording there saying the types, the, um, the types and values are being listed here. But we never define what a type and value is, yes? So this wording might be mapped to, to XML. So, um, and guess what? The table exists not only in the, uh, in, in the LibreOffice or in the ODF, but it's an HTML and DocBook and OXML. It's a concept for inserted column, which is across many things. Okay. So, um, standing up with this, I'm going to the, uh, the ODF toolkit. We, of course, we have the validator. It was just updated today with the latest validator. And, -da. and, um, and we have... Um, yeah, some XLT, you can run this, I just mentioned it because part of it, but this, um, um, yeah, it's just fun. You don't have to, to uh, if you want to transform the XML in the zip, you can do it because they are using the ODF DOM, which is the corner piece. And this ODF DOM is for editing um, this file without a layout. It's very, from the API, which is it's very simple. And uh, it's for insertion and subtraction. And the last thing is, of course, you, you the main reason we did it once for, for um, Sun was that it was the back end of the um, of an office, and we did a transformation there, and uh, also Open Exchange did it, and there they they used it to change it. We transform, and if you call this here, um, this is a document, and this is the list of changes. Like a user would edit it from start to the end, and it's being just mapped. Like you, you, I call you and give you orders how to write down, like a plotter, yes, and you can. Uh, this is a link for the latest jar, and if you have a Java and put any ODT there, you get the list how it's being plotted. And I wrote in the, um, in the document presentation, sorry, the documentation of the presentation that about the translation tool. This JSON here is very nice to, to get all the text that is translatable into certain uh, lines, yes? And so you can easily now take these lines, translate it, like DPL or Google Translate or any software you got, and then injure it back because this is an insertion. It's, can you tell? You can tell. Uh, put this in the um, delete it first, and then insert this text here in this third paragraph. You just give a number, like counting from back to the end. So this is very easy for for um, for tooling and for for yeah as translation. There are other reasons to do it as well, like chain collaboration between offices. Um, okay, so the thing is. Um, the centerpiece is the ODF DOM, and there's the validator and XLT runner, they, they're using it, and the main piece here, the most 
headache bringing piece is that we well, I'll try to fix before this talk. <laughs> That's a good uh, thing. But um, I did now, um, uh, there's a generator of the source code from the grammar. Because I told you earlier that um, I don't want to just write, read the pages, 100 pages, and write it down. But I want to generate as much as possible. And take the grammar and regenerate the source code from it. Because, yeah, it is the grammar. Then there's something called some, the multi-schema validator that, um, that I overtook, it was, um, at a, at a, I'm not sure we could take it for DDF, but it's uh, MSV, it's, um, um, it, we did a release for the validator as well, fixed a few things, Michael Stahl did a few fixes there, and um, it's a multi-schema validator because there are multiple grammars like XSD, DTD, and RNG, which is um, one of the most powerful and most understandable instead of XSD, which is used by IBM a lot. And then something called Apache Velocity, it's just a template engine where you pump in um, uh, the text, where we have templates for the source code, and then um, we fill it. And also the grammar, it's reasonable when you, when you see it not as a file, but something you can ask question queries like, is, can a text be nested? Yes, sometime, or is it, um, does it work? Is it valid? Yes. And this was ODF one or two, and you see, Chuck, we are. <coughs> I'm I'm not 100% sure of the exact numbers because, as I know, you, I'm a fixing currently generator, and there might be a little bit <laughs> that there was some popping up here, and we, we made a few things. And this is how the grammar looks like. It's like they define something. There's an XM element, and then something is optional, and um, so this is how the table. And then this link, you you jump in, and what's nice is um, I. Um, you see there's an RNG HTML. Um, it's with XLT, we, we, instead of having one text file where you have to search and, um, with search and find, there are links now. You can click and jump through it and have lines and you have links to, 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 to give a pointer um, and if you want to show something to someone. That's very, very usable. Okay. So what we did is very simple. We said, okay, that's easy. We make a Java class for every element, a Java class for every attribute. Yes, easy. Yeah. Unfortunately, things were not so easy because we realized, wait a minute, we actually, we have for the same name different content, right? So for instance, this is compare easy because they have a different parent, but in the manifest, yes, it's, we have um, different grammars for the, um, it's just like a content table. And there in the root level, it has to be 1.3, yes, because it's the manifest of that version. But if you refer to other files, you might have different versions um, older documents or newer, yes, later on, and they might have an arbitrary string. So if I generate it, what is the attribute now allowed? This value or this value? Any guess? Depends on the context, depends on the parent. So we, we generate it on the, uh, at the parent level. Here we generate it um, as one to three. There's only read, no set, yes, because it's forbidden. And here we, we have a get it setter, yes, with a string. And it's getting more complex because even in the manifest, there is, let me see about it. It looks a bit difficult, but it is, there is an attribute name, this your key generation name, you might see it, and it has one fixed value, PGP, PGP, yes? And, and if there's PGP, there are no other values, yes? But there's a choice. You can either have this or there it is again, and then it can have either this fixed value or any URI, URL, yes? And then suddenly, there are one, two, three attributes existing as well. So only when there's a certain value, it's alone. And if it's the other values, suddenly attributes appear. And we thought, gosh, how shall we generate it? Like, we have no dynamic. You change it, and suddenly you had get and setter here. So, um, so what we, we, Mike and I, we, we realized that it might be the best idea to have a constructor or something, a software developer, to, to either you allow to generate um, this Attribu uh, this element, yes, the, the parent again, yes, you, it can either generate uh, one attribute or three attributes, depending on, um, yeah, there are three choices here. One alone, one with this and these three, and one with the URI and these three. So, and now we are at the Hackfest going to design how we traverse this to, to analyze that we have these three constructors. That gives a little bit headache, but it's, um, um, good. Other thing is like default values depend on the parent, that's a, but that's comparable easily. And this is what we, what we or I am currently fixing. Okay, just from a high level view here, 
And what we are generating a lot is this XML layer. What we are handwriting or handwriting what's working is the zip, the package layer where you can put in files, arbitrary files, and, and um, where the content table has been updated all the time. And what is not currently available or just handwritten is a semantic layer. And I believe if we would have something like an API, like at insert a table and define something, then we might generate this as well. And we might have <coughs> sorry, an interoperable um, API that we, that we share. And the funny thing is, <coughs> sorry, um, if we say this is just an implementation detail, say private, you can exchange it, then you can have this API and like um, open text document, insert table, and you don't, you're not aware that you have ODF XML. You might save it either as docbook or if we are compatible this way or if, even as JSON, yes. So um, it is an implementation detail, this, this ODF, and we should be aware that the semantic of ODF is something that we should separate um, and yes. Con yeah, lost my <laughs> five minutes. Ah! <laughs> I thought questions. Yeah. Okay. These are the these are the, the, the <laughs> these are the links to um, to the sources. We 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 hope to get an yeah. Um, we hope to get an um, a release soon and uh, maybe a one at zero and maybe may wait a minute. I may I go to the first page. Yes. Uh, oh wait a minute. Oh gosh. Okay. Any questions before I? I just wanted to show you this once again here, because um, slideshow before, sorry, from current slide. Here we go. Okay. So what we're currently doing, just to digitalization of specification. Think about the idea. Currently we are extracting from the specification, but it's because it's a moving target. It's more complex. It will be more fun to generate the specification from a certain set of data. Okay. So. And we, we, we can generate this already. We know all from the grammar what is the elements and attributes, but what do I not know is the element defines the name, type, value. Yes, so these are three semantic, these are semantics um, tokens, yes, of course uh, syntax, that that's are being mapped and should be um, more specifically or more distinct explained somehow. I, I, um, yeah, that's because I want to generate more. I want to um, um, define more clearly. Okay, that's it. Any questions? So, thank you. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, more basic uh, question. Oh, gosh, not you. Yes, um, sure. How do you suggest uh, uh, for people interested uh, to the topic uh, to start and uh, to have a look uh, or? Become oh, that is that is a good question. First of all, I what I do very much like is just take a look in the specification because it's even it's a blue. Oh gosh, it's so late here. Sorry, slowly. No, don't worry, it's okay. Okay, but if you, I have somewhere, here it is. Here it is. You see here. If you look at this, it's it's um, you can see there um, the. Um, I love the HTML. It's 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 faster. You can jump easier than um, than than the ODT, which is or the PDF, which is which is huge. Yes. So um, and you might look at it and think about just look at the headlines and see about what is it about. Yes. And um, and you might also say what is difficult to understand. Give a feedback. What is uh, what is a, where it's um, yeah. What's the problem or. Um, Otherwise, just tell me what you um, uh, what are you interested in. Yes. So, but yes, go to the list. We talk. But in general, uh, do you have uh, any kind of uh, the equivalent of the easy app uh, that we have from the development? Okay, Regina. I think that it's the same for the, uh, which you mentioned earlier that we are missing the primer. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a uh, common mailing uh, list. You can write if you have some. Um, Proposals you can write to an um, open comment mailing list, at least. Mm -hmm. So, it we is. We should put those uh, information. Uh, we have a. Uh, yes. It's not just uh, there, because if you are there, you know. Yes, <laughs> it's. it's yeah, I'm, I'm, you're totally right. And it's. Um, um, you know, the spare time about writing a primer is a little bit. <laughs> yeah. 
it's difficult. I just, I'm happy just I remember that the primer is missing while I'm doing the presentation here again. It's just, as, yes, so many ideas of things that you, we talked about uh, um, last year and still unfinished uh, came back. And uh, it's good to, to, to put them all together to refresh them here. And so we have just to, to we have either, where we have the blueprint level, this is the, um, the um, OASIS, and then we have the, the implementation level, which is either LibreOffice or which is more generated because it's more the greenfield approach, is, is the ODF toolkit, yes? And um, in the ODF toolkit, there's a, a website in the, in the very end, and, um, and Michael and I are maintaining it, and Michael and I are co editors for the, uh, so we are the uh, duo for, for review, pair review, and pair programming there, and it's always good to, to um, for the automation there, yes? And, and Regina does, does all the work. <laughs> not, not, yeah, but, but no, it's, it's very, it's, um, I find the, to, to the, the work on the cheese is, is very nice at the moment. I, I do like it very much. It's, we have progress there, and uh, unfortunately, there, um, Patrick is um, currently unavailable, but um, I stepped in, and, uh, but it's, nevertheless, um, it's, so it's a bit dump, bumpy when I speak uh, English, yeah, but anyway. Um, the point is that uh, I mean, the work uh, you are doing is uh, critical and crucial because it's the format that uh, we are using uh, uh, in LibreOffice as a main format. That, that, so yes, that we are doing. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, absolutely yeah, important yeah, uh, yeah. to show how, how much you are doing and uh, how much there is uh, uh, to do because maybe other people could be interested. Uh, exactly, yeah, I try to, yes. Also, as TDF, uh, we should also, you know, support you. Cool, yes, that would be great, of course, yes. It's, uh, that is uh, will ha much more helpful. And as I said, the more that we, we, we push this boundary a little bit forward and coming from out of the box ideas like uh, we have to cut this separate semantic with this and we generate more the specifications blueprint, which is, yeah, uh, yeah, some, some weird ideas, but when, when you program it a few times, they say, oh, God, this, I'm, 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 I, <laughs> I don't want to program this again. <laughs> I just want to generate it, yes. It's, so it's, it's some kind of natural, but it's a good question. I, uh, of course, I've not thought about it until you asked me, but this is, of course, yes. I have to, the best thing is we, we discuss it here um, and come and uh, I might, um, and explaining, he helps to, to think about it and, and turn it look. Turn in the head. So, if you have a question, I believe Regina, you are the, the one of the best contacts for the next features. What is missing in the ODF standard? What is missing in LibreOffice? She has a wonderful overview. She sent a spreadsheet of this overview that I'm. I'm so, and I'm more the one. I, I want to generate it. I want to. Uh, uh, but yeah, like distinct teams, distinct interests, and different. But but yes, it works out really well. And of course, Michael with, with technical um, internal f uh, knowledge of LibreOffice. Yes. So, if there are any other further questions, I'm, thank you very much for your coming and listening. If anything else, just talk to me. I'm happy to turn my head around this again. Thank you.